guys. Welcome back to Nature's Cadence Farm. Today we're going to be working on a 1994 Ford F-150. This is a uh, 300 inline 6 truck, 5 speed manual, 2 wheel drive. Um, that doesn't have anything to do with what we're doing today other than we have a no spark condition. So I'm going to show you how I troubleshot the ignition system on this motor and what I found at the end I think might surprise you it might not surprise some of you but I'm gonna go through the whole process of how to test the uh, spark how to test the ignition coil for power and test the um, spark control or the coil control I mean for the um, ignition module over here that tells the coil when to spark and then I'm going to show you what I found was actually wrong which kind of kind of was a little tricky but I did figure it out I think so this truck started off with a no start condition um, and what what was said was it was running and then it just shut off and that was it and then they tried to get it started and it just would not start back up so First thing I'm going to check if I'm going to be doing some, some diagnostics here on this motor uh, would be spark at a spark plug. Let's just check it here. So we're going to pull this off. We're going to plug this inline spark tester in. And all of these tools I'll have uh, uh, links in the description so you can see what I'm using here. I'll, I'll, I'll put these down there so you can find them. And um, so this I've got this. This is kind of a, a neat tool because this can either plug... Uh, onto here like that for a 90 or it can plug on there for a straight either or it goes in line uh, This truck actually has the inline uh, Or needs the inline so that can just plug onto there and then so you would take and plug this into where the spark plug would would go and Then you would plug this into the spark plug All right, I'm gonna go turn the truck over now and show you okay as you can see no spark there next stop we're going to check for spark coming out of the coil because it could be a bad distributor cap or coil wire going from the coil to the distributor cap so let's check that out so what we're going to do now is turn the truck over with the spark tester in line with the coil and uh, the center pin of the distributor cap. So let's try to start the truck now and see if we have any spark. All right, well, there you go. So no spark. All right. The next thing we're going to check is for uh, power going to our coil. And if you see the coils right here, We've got a connector, and that connector has a red wire on one side, and on the other side is a tan wire. We'll get to the tan wire in just a second. So I've got the the clamp for the incandescent test light on ground, and then we want to check check we want to probe the back side of the red wire here with, and you can see that that orange light just turned on. You see how it's turning on? That means I'm getting power to the coil. So the next thing we want to check is coil control while we're here at the coil already. So we can see um, the reason that maybe there you go. So the reason we're getting uh, power on the other side, which is supposed to be the ground while the key is on, is because the coil isn't being grounded at the moment and what controls the coil ground is the ignition module but what tells the ignition module what to ground is the uh the the pip or the camshaft position sensor in the uh, distributor cap which is right there so that has a little wheel inside of it that trips a sensor and so without having anything trying to change right now uh that you know that wouldn't be changing so uh, what we'll do is we'll leave this probe in here and what we'll do is we'll try to turn the engine over and see if this flashes. If this flashes, that means we're getting coil control 
and uh, the, and then the coil would be bad. So let's turn the motor over and see if we get any coil control. This orange light should flash. So we're done with the test light and we still have no spark. So next step is to try to use this uh, LED test light that I made up because I don't want a lot of current put on this next circuit. So what we're going to check for now is to see if we're sending or if we're receiving a signal from the pickup coil in the distributor over here. And so what we're going to have to do with that, I've got a red and a green. And um, th this is a really simple, I'll put the uh, the number of this LED in uh, in the description. And you can, you can buy some of those. I'm sure somewhere we can find them. Uh, but I just made this up. I soldered these wires on there. It's, you know, and then just put some red tape all the way around it. And, uh, and then this, I just use these two wires. Red is obviously positive, yellow, black. It's, you know, I just rely on these two leads to kind of tell me. So, uh, this is a, 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 a an indicator LED that does not re require a resistor to go in line to, for it. So it just, you just hook up the voltage to it and it's good to go. So that's a really nice option, uh, especially for uh, simplicity's sake. So uh, what we're going to do now is we're actually going to look for a ground signal uh, coming from the the distributor to the ignition module which is mounted over here on the fender. Alright, so here's the setup. I've got the positive lead on the positive terminal of the battery. I've got this negative lead on this very top pin, and that's what they call the PIP in, which is the signal from the distributor pickup coil coming back, giving a ground to this ignition module to give a ground to tell the ignition module to ground the ignition coil when it needs to. So let's see if we have a signal. So what this should do is actually it should pulse the LED every time the distributor pickup coil goes around in a circle and grounds and that adds a ground to this signal wire. So let's see if, what happens here. So what did we see? We saw the bulb or the LED flashing. So that tells us that the pickup coil is functioning properly. Now let's check and see if we're even getting a ground to the ignition module to give the ground to the coil. So let's see if we have that. So now I've got it in the second pin from the bottom and that's the coil ground out. And so let's now let's check to see if we have a ground when we uh, turn the ignition over. So you can see the light is on before the key is turned on. Let's see what happens when we turn the key on. Alright, well you can see there that the light turns off as soon as we try to turn the key on. That's telling me there's something wrong with the PCM. Uh, because that's where it gets the ground from when the key is on. So let's check out the PCM now. So the PCM is located here in the firewall behind this large skinny black connector with a 10 millimeter bolt holding the connector to the PCM. ECU, PCM, I, I'm not exactly sure what they call it, but that's what it is. And so that's, here's the ignition module, there's the PCM. So in order to get to the PCM to get it out actually not to get to it but just to get it out you have to remove or loosen up actually this uh, inner fender well and it's just plastic but you've got one bolt here that's 5 16 and that that goes in that large hole back there and then there's some other ones along this this edge here and these are 7 30 seconds head so that's kind of a weird size but that's what they are and they go all underneath the here and and all along this side here so I went ahead and 
unplugged a couple of things just to get them out of the way like this needs to be unplugged so you can kind of get that harness out of the way as soon as you unbolt that connector so let's get this unplugged that just pulls off of there and uh, I went ahead and removed this one had this truck actually has cruise control on it so I unbolted that and put that over here on the side above the um, reservoir for the brake fluid and uh, so the next step is we're going to take this 10 millimeter bolt loosen loosen it up and that'll back this connector off of the PCM there we go so got that unplugged I'm gonna go ahead and fold all this stuff up out of the way shove it down in there or something so I can get get my hands down in there so once you get that connector removed there's a two 11 millimeter nuts that are on these studs and uh, that holds this plastic uh, rubberized kind of gasket over top of everything so once you get that out then you can slide the PCM forward And with that fender removed, you can go ahead and get this or re removed. That fender loosened up, you can get the PCM out. So I'm going to check out this PCM, see what's going on inside of here. We've got a T15 driver here. So it's just two screws here in the sides. So one there and one here. Let's see what we got in here. Oh, wow. Well, well, that's what's going on. So I don't know if you can see that. Oh, yeah, you can definitely see that. There is some carnage in there. Whatever that is, it uh, decided to let loose. So I would say that's definitely a problem. So let's get a new PCM and pop it in there and see what happens. Okay, we got a new... PCM here got this from uh, the only place I could find it was on eBay uh, or at least not really it was just an affordable and it was the correct one so I was happy with that so it came in this uh, looks like an anti-static maybe pink bag not normal from the ones I, I'm used to seeing but that's okay as long as it works so we're just going to remove this it says it's remanufactured and uh Electronic Control Computer, ECC, I guess is what they call that, maybe from Ford. Well, either way. Uh, remanufactured, original module, all the good stuff. So, here we are. So we're going to put this in. Installation is reverse of the uh, removal. And we're going to plug everything in and see what happens. All right, so we got everything plugged in, reinstalled, back together, double checked everything. Next up is uh, we're just I just went ahead and plugged this the inline tester in with the spark plug uh, number one actually. So let's just turn it over and see what happens. Well, now that I know it's getting spark, I'm going to go ahead and take this inline. Uh, spark tester out of the way and uh, go ahead and put some fresh gas in the gas tank and uh, go ahead and work on this thing a little bit and see if we can get it to start up let's go ahead and turn it over some and see if we can get it to start up uh, I know this truck hasn't ran for at least three or four years so uh, it might be a little rough but let's see what, what happens Yeah, something does not sound exactly right. I'm not sure what that is yet. Uh, but we're going to... We'll figure it out, I'm sure. But either way, there it is. Now we have spark. And uh, now we're getting fuel. Evidently, the PCM controls the fuel pump, too, obviously. Uh, so that was working now. I was kind of worried that wasn't working. But uh, either way, there you go.
all right guys well thanks for watching and following along as you can see it was just that PCM that was causing the no spark issue the whole time uh, so not not too bad to fix not too hard but it, uh, it did it did fix all the problems so that was it well thanks for watching and we'll see you next time